2012. My name is Crystal Stubbs, and I'm interviewing Michael Eblen at his home in Columbus, Ohio. I think it was about three or four, it would have to be. And I remember trying to get into your room um, to, I don't remember what, I probably just wanted to hang out and be in your presence and you having nothing to do with it. And I remember, like, sobbing and falling to the falling to the floor because I wanted to be in your room with you. <laughs> Definitely my mom, just because her having been a single parent, and I think it's kind of strange because I don't even, I never missed not having a dad. It was completely something, it was something that was completely normal to me. Um, so, but everything that is uh, parenthood and, like, and all that, figure stuff is just her, so she's a big influence in the way that I would, like, she always, drew, like, made us very driven to, like, um, to always, like, get your grades in school and be, um, pursue things like that, um, and just her story of having, um, having lost her dad when she was seven years old and growing up with a single mom and having to help take care of the kids because she was the oldest girl and, you know, all of the, um, all of the times that she, um, you know, had, like, shitty husbands and all of that sort of stuff kind of having persevered through all of that, I think is kind of a big deal. And when I know, like, I know how, like, invested she is in our success, so I think that, I think it's, in terms of influence, I think it's definitely one of the reasons why I try to succeed a lot, just because I don't want to have made all of that, like, hard work and investment for nothing. Um, but otherwise, yeah, like, I feel like you taught me a lot of um, stuff about, like, little life lessons about um, kind of uh, just, you know, how like, how to do this and how make sure you don't do this and just kind of, like, little life lessons. And then um, Aunt Nikki, I think, was a big influence in just in the way that I approach... Um, really thinking about the world and being philosophical and, and being critical and um, the way that she kind of developed me intellectually at an early age and challenged me. And I, I always loved her because she always spoke to me like I was an adult. And um, we had conversations that uh, really stimulated me at a young age and got me interested in, in social issues and, like, intellectual pursuits. If I really think about it, I know that I remember having a lot of fun. I mean, I had lots of friends, I was in everything, like, I remember being happy for a lot of it, but I really remember, like, like, the hateful, backwards, hillbilly people, like, I guess when I think of Northridge, that's what I think of, I think of that mentality, um, and all of the stuff that I, like, when I was starting, like, a gay straight alliance at school, um, and all of the backlash that came with that, I always remember my senior year and, and pushing that and fighting and um, getting shut down and going to the school board and threatening to get a lawyer and like that's what comes to me. That's the thing that I think of a lot more than being drum captain in band and, and stuff like that. So I think it would have to be um, specifically the there was a time that we had an event like for Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard being like the the guy in the nineties that. Um, these, like, two guys um, offered to give him a ride home from a bar. They, like, jumped him and robbed him and um, basically beat him to an inch of his life and then tied him to a fence and left him to die. And the Gay Straight Alliance was doing a, um, like, that Matthew Shepard Remembrance Day, and um, everybody was really hateful about it. I guess it worked in the sense that there was lots of conversation, but um, all of the posters we put up, we put posters up all over the school, and in between every class period, I remember I was late to every class because I went around and picked up all of them, I picked them, like, out of the trash and I put them up and I, um, I, like, carried around tape and so I wanted them to see, I think I could use duct tape so it looked awful, but it was like, this is why this is happening because this is, there's, you're being provoked so much by somebody that died, like, it was just so strange that they, that they were so adamant about expressing their hate for someone they didn't know or, like, they were being guilted into having feeling, or, like, feeling guilty about that. It was just very strange. Yeah, because I don't know what, why that jumps out, but there's, like, I think it, maybe there's, like, a certain audacity that was sparked that day. 
a certain stubbornness that was like, I'm not going to let anyone fuck with me like that, you know, and not, I'm just not going to put up with shit, and I'm, I, if you're going to be that way, like, I'm going to show you how stupid you'll be, I, I will do it, and I, you know, I didn't care all day, and I don't remember how I didn't get in trouble, I, I, I think that it was that my teachers knew that I was, <laughs> that what was going on, because everybody was talking about it, they eventually, I remember they, that was the reason that the, the Gay Journal Alliance got shut down, because they said that the club was becoming a distraction to the classes. And there was more discussion going on that day than actual classwork. And I, I um, challenged the principal at the time. I was like, I mean, that seems more like like more of a flaw in the way that the, the teachers are handling their classroom. I mean, there's all sorts of dramatic gossip things that happen. But I really can't remember not having known about it. There's, I mean, there are definitely some of us that, you know, like, that don't know, and even in their late 20s, I mean, later in life, married, like, they just have this weird, um, uh, I mean, they had suspicions, but there's, like, this something about, there's always kind of a, a solid understanding that, that, that I was gay, that, like, I remember, I think it was, like, gender dynamics kind of played a role, because I would, I had lots of friends and, um, girls, and I had girlfriends, but what, we had was just, like, intimate friendships, like, we were just really close, and we wanted to hold hands and, like, be lovey-dovey, and that was how I am with my girlfriends now, but, um, but then boys were, like, this other thing, and it, I was always hanging out with the girls, and I remember chasing around this boy, I, I know his name, forget to be, even to this day, in kindergarten, but, um, and knowing that, like, there was something weird there, there was, like, a, I don't know what this is, like, the boys are weird, like, the same silly thing, so. I know. I told a girl named Caitlin Philippi, she was my best friend at the time, I wrote her a letter, um, I was just thinking about how it is about, I was in the seventh grade, so I was 11 or 12, I think I was 11, because I'm young, um, and she, um, was like, oh, no, like, it's okay, and was totally accepting, only later to find out that she came out as a lesbian, which is funny because we uh, gay people seem to have a tendency to find each other. So, um, and then her girlfriend later in life was also a girl that I dated in in, in elementary school. So, small world. But yeah, Caitlin was the first person. Well, it was awkward because I ended up telling, I ended up writing her the letter because she wanted to date. And like we like, I was like, uh, okay. And like then I was like not into it. And so I, I wrote her the letter to explain that I didn't hate her. You know, like she wasn't a, a girl not worth dating. But so she and Jackie, Jackie, I was friends with like from second grade on. They, I think it, I don't think, yeah, they were neither really all that interested in women before that. Definitely not Caitlin at all. And um. I know that that happened, I, I think it was junior year in high school. might have been before. But yeah, they dated like for a junior and senior year. And when I took a boy to prom, they went with each other. So we were like the gay couples at my senior year prom. Sorry. I think my most lasting message, and one that's not nearly so cerebral, is just that in the same reason that I want to be a social worker is like, you know, it, we want to take care of each other. Like the... Countries that have it figured out, like, where they, they take better care of each other, and they they have smaller gaps, for instance, between the, the, the poor and the rich, they um, actually have higher rates of self-reported happiness, even in the rich, even if they're paying, like, a crazy amount of taxes, what we would consider to be that, and um, they have lower rates of crime and, and rape and disease, like, everything gets better when we start caring for each other. Um, so I think there really is, like, a metaphysical, like, reality to us all being connected. And something that I think is interesting, because we do, especially as Americans, being in a very individualized society, I think we kind of forget how connected we all are. A few things that I probably shouldn't mention that I regret that I did, but... Well, if you don't want it publicly known, then don't certainly, mention right. it. Certainly, right. I don't... This, <laughs> I'm still out, I'm still within the statute of limitation, but <laughs> um, I'm being actually pretty cognizant of that. Um, but um, I think that it's natural. I think that we go through these phases, and our even I think it's like a developmental milestone. Even that, you know, when you're little, like your whole world is yourself, and then your whole world becomes your family, and then you kind of get to high school, you get a teenager, and you want your whole life to be your friend and you, like, kind of lose touch with everything, and 
especially with the way that our extended family is, and even in some ways like our immediate family, it's like it kind of sucks that I spent so much time on, in college and even in high school to some degree, like investing in all those information and losing touch with a lot of people that family members, you know, because I really didn't know how much life changes after college. Like I really thought I was making friends that I have for the rest of my life. Um, and some of them I know that I will, but it's a lot fewer than I thought it was going to be. 